bit. I can throw this cricket ball over a house, run through the house and catch it. I bet me in group 26 can work it out. It's thrown over the house. The cricketer runs through and enough time to catch the ball on the other side. If we can simplify this by we'll having a symmetrical house, symmetrical ball path, and assuming no effects from air resistance or wind. We let x0 be half the house width, x1 be the original distance between cricketer and house, and h the maximum height reached by the ball. Take his initial throwing speed to be u, we can split horizontal and vertical components into uh and uv respectively. Looking at the horizontal component, we get a value for time taken for the ball to reach the midpoint. Using this, and looking at the vertical component, we get values for uv and uh. This model neglects that the house will have front and back walls. We let this height be h0, keeping with the symmetry. Looking at horizontal components again, we can get a value for the time at which the ball reaches the first ball. And looking at the vertical component, we can obtain an inequality involving h0. Note that s is equal to h0 plus c to show that the vertical height must be greater than h0. We can rearrange this equation to give us a quadratic in x1, the original distance from the cricketer to the house. We can factorise this to give a simple inequality for x1, remembering that a distance cannot be negative. We can now use this to revise the value we have for uh. Given that we want to find the minimum value for uh, we can substitute the inequality for equality. Using this new uh and the uv, we can use Pythagoras to find u squared. This equation can be rearranged for a quadratic in h. There are two solutions for h, one of which is a value less than h0. Our h must then be greater than the other solution to satisfy the requirement that the ball travels above h0. Again, we substitute the inequality for equality to find the minimum h and put this value back into the equation for uh. This gives us the horizontal speed in terms of a max throwing speed, an h0, an x0, and a g. Once we reach this equation, we needed to substitute the values in. We took 26 metres per second to be a realistic maximum speed of u and selected reasonable dimensions for a house to get our h0 and x0. Putting these values into our equation, we get several different values for uh. Clearly the cricketer needs to have at least this average speed to reach the ball in time. We found that the average speed of a human to run over a short distance is roughly 3.2 metres a second. This leads us to conclude that it is not impossible that a cricketer could throw a ball over a house, run through the house and catch the ball. In addition, we can think about two different factors. Firstly, a wind in the opposite horizontal direction to the ball would make the task easier. Secondly, our h0 ignores the fact that the ball is not thrown from ground level. The cricketer's height would make the actual h0 less than what we use, considering the ball could still be caught at ground level.